Hey guys, 104 from Maverick checking in with another video. Welcome back to Fuel School. This time we're taking a look at the F-15C and the PDL system on the KC-135. The pilot director lights, PDL, are an array of signal lights located forward of the wing body joint and on the underside of the tanker aircraft. These lights provide positional and trend information with respect to the receiver aircraft position within the refueling envelope by the green colour indications that you can see here. The bar on the left gives the receiver their vertical position and the bar on the right gives them their longitudinal position. To make contact with the tanker, both PDL lights need to be centred. If you get too far back from the contact position, the bar on the right will move back one notch. This is your cue as the pilot to add a little more power to move the aircraft forward back into position. If you drift too high, you will see the PDL bar on the left move up one position and illuminate a down arrow to signal to the pilot to apply some forward pressure to arrest the climb and get back into position. Going low will result in the left PDL bar dropping down one notch and indicating a green up arrow to signal to the pilot to apply a slight backward pressure on the stick to gently climb back into position. Seeing a red bar on any of the PDL lights means you have exceeded the safe parameters for transferring fuel and will cause the boom operator to disconnect the transfer. You will then have to reposition the aircraft so both PDL lights are centered to be reconnected. Okay, so now we have a good idea of how the PDL system works. It's pretty intuitive. The PDL bar on the right will tell us if we're too far back or too far forward, and the PDL light on the left will tell us if we're too high or too low. So all we need to do now is work out a nice stable approach to the contact position. So the first thing we do is check over our shoulder to make sure the pre-contact position is clear and safe and then, in a nice controlled fashion, move pre-contact behind the boom. At this point, we're looking to line up two visual cues. The first is taking the aircraft datum on the HUD and lining it up with where the right wing on the tanker joins the fuselage. The next visual cue we want to sort out is taking the aircraft waterline the W in the centre of the HUD and lining that up just below the tip of the boom. Now that we're settled into the pre-contact position, we will let the tanker know that we're ready for contact. Ready, pre-contact. Clear contact. At this point, we want to make very small power additions to steadily increase the aircraft's forward momentum towards the boom, while all the time keeping our two visual cues lined up. Once you arrive in this position just behind the boom, press left control and R for Romeo to open the refueling hatch on the F-15. You'll see a confirmation green ready light on the aircraft's canopy. As we get closer to the tanker, we are focusing straight ahead and looking for visual contact on the PDL system to check that we're in the correct position as we close in. Our top priority in this position is to line up the left PDL light first to be in the correct vertical position, so as we approach and I see that I am one bar low, I will gently apply some back pressure to climb the aircraft up slightly. Once we have the left PDL light centered, we gently keep moving forward until we see the right PDL light activate and approach the center. I'll zoom in here so you can see more clearly.
The most common mistake is pilots not using the PDL system because they either don't know it's there or they just don't know how to use it. Subsequently, they end up guessing where the correct position is or worse, trying to look behind them to see where the boom is located. The PDL system is there for a reason and is a huge factor in making a successful connection. While it is true that after lots of practice you can connect without referencing the PDL system, this only comes after hundreds of connections and intuitively knowing where the aircraft should be. Until you get proficient at refueling, 100% of your focus should be looking forward at the PDL system and reacting to its instructions. Once you have some practice reacting to the PDL system's instructions, you'll actually find it very easy to stay in place. As long as you make some positive changes every time a PDL light changes, then you'll be able to keep up with it. The aircraft's always going to be moving around, so it's important that you keep your focus on the PDL system and react to what is telling you the aircraft is doing. And a quick disclaimer here guys, the shot you seen earlier in the video of me watching the boom connect to the aircraft, that was recorded from a track replay. There is no way I would attempt to refuel while looking over my shoulder in real time. Most people who are new to air-to-air -air refueling incorrectly believe that there is a certain position on the throttle that will hold the aircraft in the same place. This is not true at all and it gets a lot of people into trouble and behind the aircraft. The throttle is always moving when you're approaching the tanker and when you're connected. You have to work to keep the aircraft still by adding on little bits of power and then taking it away again. If you observe the control indications on the bottom right of the screen, you will see how I operate the throttle as I approach and connect with the tanker. You'll see that the throttle rarely stops moving for more than one second. This is an important skill to master because air-to-air -air refueling is all about managing your aircraft's momentum. You not only have to be in control of what direction the aircraft is moving, but also at what speed the aircraft is moving. A good way to think about how your throttle work should be is remembering that every time you add power on, you take the same amount of power off. So every time we add power on, we want to then take the same amount of power off a split second later, so we're managing our aircraft's momentum. This is what you see me doing here. I'm always adding on little bits of power to get the aircraft moving forward, but then immediately I'm taking that same amount of power back off once I get some momentum. I then keep repeating this action to manage my forward movement so I'm not in a continuous acceleration. If I want to move the aircraft backwards, I do the opposite. I take little bits of power off and then I add the same amount of power back on the instant the aircraft starts to move to manage the change in speed. With air-to-air -air refueling, it's important to fight the temptation to get lazy with the throttle and really keep it working throughout the entire transfer. The more practice you get, the easier it becomes to predict how the aircraft is going to react to certain power changes. As I've mentioned before in other videos, once contact has been made, it's very easy to suffer from a sort of mild panic. In the F-15, this can happen very easily, as you have no visual with the boom behind you and you cannot see what's going on, making it a rather intimidating process. The key is to remain relaxed throughout the whole procedure. Try not to be tense sitting bolt upright in your chair as you approach the tanker. Remind yourself to relax and just focus on keeping your visual cues lined up and the PDL system in sight. I often say to myself when I'm connected, relax Maverick, just relax, you've done all the hard work already, now all you need to do is stay in the same place. Relax, just relax. I just keep repeating that same mantra over and over to myself and that helps me from freaking out when I'm connected up to the tanker. A good way to look at the process if you're struggling with it is to forget all about the fueling part of it and just focus on the formation flying aspect with the tanker. This way you don't heap loads of pressure on yourself once connection has been made and then you start to lose control of the aircraft. Air-to-air -air refueling is intimidating, however it becomes very routine after a lot of practice. 
Many people convince themselves that they cannot do it before they even get to the tanker. This makes it harder from the get-go. You want to arrive at the tanker with confidence and the ability to focus. As long as you keep your visual cues lined up and react to what the PDL system is telling you, you will see results in your performance. Understand and accept that the aircraft is always going to be moving around slightly during the procedure. Make smooth adjustments based off what the PDL system is telling you. Don't let the panic start to grip you just because you're moving out of position slightly. Stay calm and just make smooth, focused corrections. Once the transfer is complete, the boom operator will disconnect the boom and retract it towards the tanker. He will say, transfer complete, disconnect, and your green ready light will illuminate again on the canopy. The instant this happens, apply forward pressure on the stick first, then bring the throttles back and close the refueling hatch by pressing left control and R for Romeo again. It's important that you look around you as you begin to move rearwards and avoid moving right into the reform area until you have cleared any traffic currently holding there. We are always aiming to pass behind holding aircraft, not directly underneath them. If you want to practice offline, you can create your own tanker missions in DCS. Details of how to do this are included in episode 1 of this series, DCS Fuel School, covering the F-18 Legacy Hornet. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to leave them in the comments section, and I will get back to you as soon as I can. As usual, thanks so much for watching, Top Gun and Volleyball, I'll catch you guys next time. Maverick out.